darlings, welcome to the channel. We know upcycling, upcycling, upcycling is the art of making ugly things beautiful, darling. Ugly things beautiful. So let's have a look at this boring lamp. It's just a boring lamp with a stick. Nothing special. Nothing at all special. But now we shall decide what to do. And I've had this wonderful idea, darling. I'm thinking that we could turn this boring lamp into a vintage radio. How spiffing would that be? Let's get on with the video. OK, we got rid of the posh twat, the hipster, the whatever you want to call him. We are going to do some upcycling, but we're going to upcycle this lamp into a hack of vintage radio. And I've bought this as is, and I've seen the inside, but I'm going to go through it again because I was so shocked I had to lie down for six months, which is why I haven't made any videos. It frightened me that much. Not quite true, but hey, I've got to say something, haven't I? So what have we got here? Well, first of all, let's turn this thing off. We have here a Hacker RP-17 Mini Herald from mid-60s, something like that. So we're not talking a new thing. It's 50, 55 years old, maybe. Um, as old as I am, anyway. And somebody's gone and drilled a hole and put a blooming lamp through it. Now, why? Why? A vintage radio is worth more than a bedside lamp. You can go and buy a lamp in Tesco's or Asda's, Walmart, Argos, Amazon, for a fiver. Vintage radio, worth far more. So let's, let's take a moment and pray for the soul of this poor radio. Pray. Right, so let's get on. Somebody's put a pair of brass screws in the back. So let's start by taking those out. They're flat, so will that one fit it? Yes. Right, so that's... How long is this screw? Okay, so not only are they excellent electricians, they can choose two completely different sizes of brass screw. Let's take the back off. I'm horrified and I'm shocked. Let's move that out the way for a moment and let's turn this down so that you can see what I can see. This is the, the stalk for the lamp and wires have been cut it looks like the ferrite rod in this particular model has been completely ripped out. Components have been pushed over to one side. It still has the original AF117 transistors in. I suppose that's a, a good thing. But they've put a hacksaw through the speaker. Now, the speaker is held in by two brass nuts not four not eight not six not twenty two brass nuts so one has to ask why didn't they take the easy route hacksawing through the basket on this speaker must have taken ages absolutely ages and they've ruined a perfectly good vintage speaker the stalk itself goes through goes through the chassis of the radio. Now that doesn't look drilled. That looks like it's been punched through and then expanded. For anybody who's referencing these things, the serial number on the set is 12687. And um, it has met a very sad demise. I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take the the chassis well I'm going to undo the chassis I don't know if I can take it out at the moment simply because I don't know if I'll be able to lift it out with this stupid piece of brass work on the top so I'm going to undo the side screws anyway 
and see if this actually releases anything. Now this is going to be a two-part restoration really and as I say a restoration I think the honest the honest way this is going to go is I'm going to end up swapping bits out of another set to make this one good. It is missing the amplifier board, missing the ferrite rod, which is a crucial part of an AM long wave radio or medium wave long wave radio. Those two critical things would effectively say that this radio is scrap now. The chassis itself is in reasonable condition. The rec scene is passable. I wouldn't say it was perfect. Now, again, looking on the inside here, this is held to the base by two great big Phillips headed screws. So I'm wondering if I can separate this from this and make it a little bit smaller to work with. So let's get the bigger screwdriver out and see if that fits in. Yes. And we can just see what they've done. Now these look like chipboard MDF screws, something like that high density fiber board particle board whatever you call it in your part of the world and is that coming off or is that still rigidly fixed that feels fairly rigidly fixed so it looks like i may have to get the spanner out and undo okay so what about the bottom section does this unscrew Right, so this is going to be a lot of unscrewing because we like unscrewing things, don't we? Um, I'll get back to you once I've got the stick out and we can go further. What do we have now that I've finally got this out? And I tell you, this has taken me a lot longer than I anticipated. You can probably see the excessive use of force with vice grips and... Uh, other implements of death so that's a large heavy weight of metal that's a bent piece of rubbish this is a block of wood with another block of wood wood screwed on top of it hole in the back hole through the middle of the poor radio yes this hole through here has been punched straight through now, that is just obscene. Um, let me pull the brass trims off. And these are just, if they haven't glued them on. Like get in there behind that clip. Stab myself with a screwdriver. So yeah, the dial face has just been drilled through. And that has just been a punched hole. The tension spring for the dial cord is there. The tuning dial is in place and still works. The, the original capacitors are in. This one has been pulled out and snapped off on the negative side. The original OA79 diode is in place. These two dally caps, yes, they're in place, but they'll be absolutely shot. The Hunt's cap will also be a, a candidate for throwing away. And we have the three AF117 transistors, which may or may not test good. On the back side, we have another Hunt's cap there, one there, the tuning assembly. To get this going as a viable chassis I think is going to be a little bit pointless but it will be a useful source of spare parts. So how am I going to restore this radio I hear you ask. As it happens I bought another one. This one is actually in a similar state to this it's been animalized 
This grill itself isn't too bad. It doesn't look bent. It's got some tarnish on the front and the badge is a little bit poorly, but we can we can deal with that. It is brass, so it it will polish up. The cloth behind it is again in a pretty sorry state. So there we go. There should be some padding behind these front panels but that has long since gone and it is a problem with a lot of radios of this vintage not just hackers but the the foam has started to deteriorate the obvious thing with this one is that the knobs are completely incorrect for this particular set so let's whip those off we'll keep them they might fit something else you never know what we're going to come across the handle is not in bad condition uh, as is the original one on the on the lamp but the rec scene here has seen better days the buttons also although they're working they've discolored certainly far more than the buttons on this one which are still a lovely white color if we take a look at the back of the other one i'm going to put it over the back as you can see it's smooth there are no holes apart from what the uh, the muppet drilled in to put those brass screws in except for the catch and this grill here okay no problem you think but what's happened here let's open the catch this one somebody has drilled a hole in the back cabinet back of the cabinet they fitted a transformer and what looks to be a rudimentary power supply now as you see that the frame on this one is delaminating this one has got the amplifier board which is a crucial part that was missing from the other set without it the set basically doesn't work at all what's holding this together now there's one screw there so let's see if we can get that out and uh, just investigate what we've got here well we've got what I can only assume to be mains wiring using two colors identical going to an electro value transformer 012 so it's got multiple 12 volt tappings these are actually two Texas Instruments bridge rectifiers right so somebody has tapped in here now these capacitors are dated 1976 this hasn't been done recently what we're going to do with this is we're going to remove it completely so you have to take the chassis out to take the amplifier board out okay so let's start by oh there's a screw in there with no cup okay and this side's still got the cup so at least we've got a spare the brass work on this as you see is a bit mucky a bit tarnished and pitted the other brass work is uh, a lot better so between the two we've got one good set let's slide this backwards because this actually just comes out on a channel like that we can unplug the antenna connector there and there we can unplug the speaker wires from the socket and the amplifier board that's the radio itself dismantled same as in the other set but obviously this one has all of its connections now it looks like somebody's been in here with a soldering iron because there's some very bad solder joints on here some melted loose wiring there so this this will all obviously need a refurb this we could test we could test with the speakers let's have a go and to test it i can bring in power from my power supplies so we have current on that let's just set this one up there's nine volts from each of the power supplies Well, it sounds like we're nearly getting something there. So, 
so it is Let's see if a knob will Right, so we've got nothing on long wave, but we have got medium wave. So that's a start. We know the radio is sort of working. Now I'm going to kill the power supplies again before anything goes up in smoke. And uh, yeah, that gives us a pretty good starting point. First things first, I'm going to renovate the amplifier board and I'm going to renovate the radio board because obviously these capacitors are going to be shot to pieces. They're, they're not going to be worth saving, to be quite honest. We know that the transistors are working fine because we got sound, which means we've got the oscillator running, we've got the IFs running, everything is in position. OK, we didn't have long wave, but uh, that might be cured by some of these components being tested or changed. I'm going to uh, start with the amplifier board, I think. So that is a 100 microfarad at 25 volts. I'm just going to bring in the peak meter and run this up and just see what it actually measures. Uh, I know some people say, oh, don't change capacitors unless you have to. Well, let's check it, shall we? It's reading 126 it's it's borderline i'll say that it is borderline let's pop the dally off as well and test that one now this is meant to be 100 microvolts uh, 100 microfarads at 12 volts it's 200 it's doubled it's well out of its tolerance this elka mold here eight microfarads An 8 microfarad is measuring 24, so that's well out of tolerance. Because of that, I think I'm going to do a complete recapacitating of this board. Because, because yes, it also needs a good clean-up. So, I'll bring you back when I've done that bit. OK, so that's the amplifier board done. And, yeah, it's just a, a few components, you know four capacitors for four electrolytic capacitors one ceramic and one polycap all have been changed nice and simple the new ones are considerably smaller than the old ones modern technology why didn't i use axials because radials fit just as well and there's no need to overcomplicate things radials are easier to get hold of cheaper and they work just as well now the next job is to work on the main radio board and again to do this it's just a matter of I'm going to start by changing out the the spoogie caps and uh, replacing anything that looks a little bit suspect there's that one there there's a hunt down there there's a dally in here and generally fire this up afterwards with the amp board and see how far we've got now, while I'm doing this, I'd like to know what is your definition of the level of force I can use on the person who punched a hole through the original radio chassis. So again, the, the dial face is a little bit mucky on the inside, but at least it's intact and clean. I do want to replace this switch bank because... Or do I want to replace the switch bank? I certainly want to tidy it up. OK, right, so back now and the bench semi looks like a disgusting mess but we have the radio and it's minus its dial plate but uh, never mind the amp board and the case with the good speaker in it rather than the cut up speaker 
So let's just fire up the radio now. Uh, bearing in mind I've done nothing to this bar, put it back together with new components. So turn it on to medium wave. And let's see if we can get anything in here. Now it's usually very hard. Station there. Another one there. Another one there. And there's a very strong one there, which says to me that uh, whatever we've done hasn't ruined the radio. Let's try the same thing on long wave. Now I'm only expecting to pick up one station. So we've got the one. Right, so that's long wave sorted out. Um, let me kill the power supplies and get rid of some of these wires.